Hey, court reporters, welcome back to my channel. Listen, this right here is an urgent video because we cannot waste any more time not talking about how toxic Bartiz is on this season of Love is Blind. Listen, I started off the show episode one going, why the hell is a 25 year old man on this show? I don't believe 25 year olds should be on Love is Blind. I think it's way too young to commit to something like marriage um, in this sort of way. I think that at that age, you should still be trying to find a partner on your own, okay? I, I, I can't get with it. I think it's way too young. But he did kind of try to present himself as a progressive kind of a man who um, is quite understanding. I remember when uh, his fiance Nancy started talking to him about how she had donated eggs for couples and stuff like that. Like he was very accepting of it. So I was like, okay, that's kind of nice because I know that some men would not accept it. Um, but it was nice that he, um, you know, was okay with it. And then Raven started talking to him. She revealed that it was something that like, she was scared of being judged for when she told him that she was a bottle service girl and like a bartender and different things like that. And that she dated older men who took care of her. Um, and he didn't seem too judgmental about it in episode one, but that was the only episode in this entire season where Bartise was not toxic. Okay. So for the next <laughs> six episodes this man really lets his true color show and it starts in episode two when he decides that he wants to dump raven and propose to nancy listen it's okay that he wanted to dump raven that he didn't see a future with her that he thought his future with nancy would be better okay but the problem is that in order to dump raven he decided to try to humiliate her on the show so he sets up this like dinner of like enchiladas or something and then he fills her room up with $1 bills as if she's a stripper. And he knew that she was already like very like insecure about the fact that she's a bottle service girl and how she would be viewed for that. So he decided to really humiliate her and make her feel like she wouldn't be good for anybody, um, good enough for anybody because of what it is that she does for money by leaving her on that note. And I was so happy when Raven turned it around on him and said, you know what? I don't want to be with you either. I've got a better connection with another man who, um, you know, who 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 I would see myself having a better future with and like kind of pieced out on him in that way. Like I was like, thank God she did not give him the time of day. And that really threw him off. And I love that. Then when we go into episode four, you see Bartise like constantly asking Nan Nancy to kiss him. I remember saying this in one of my live stream recaps. I was like, this man is constantly asking his fiance to kiss him. That would drive me nuts. I'm sorry. You're not kissing me every two seconds. It's annoying and it's weird and it's too much. Okay. Um, like ugh. I remember someone in the live stream chat said that it's probably because he's trying to do that to force himself to be physically attracted to her. And I think whoever said that wound up being right because we're going to see as the episodes progress him talk more and more about his lack of physical attraction to his fiance nancy so um you know he's talking to his fiance speaking of nancy and he says that he thinks that raven would be more physical with him than she is with sk um and that she only got with sk because he dumped her like he's really really pissed that he let raven get away basically and so this is because he had a conversation with sk sk let him know that he and raven are not really like even like holding hands, hugging, cuddling, nothing. Like in bed, they're on opposite sides. And Bartiz was so excited about it that he had to recreate it with Nancy, like all giddy and stuff as if like his team just won the playoffs or something like that. It was very weird. And so um, he tells us, the viewers, after seeing Raven, he's like, wow, she looks so stunning, gorgeous. She knew what she was doing with that dress. Uh, I really wanna like get to know her basically. And um, he says that he regrets dumping her too soon. He says that he thinks that he has feelings for her. And like, again, he wants to get to continue getting to know her and making that connection, which is odd because he's an engaged man, right? And that is just so freaking weird. In my opinion, that is cheating. So I just do not understand. So again, he's in bed with his fiance and he's talking about how Raven, another woman, is so freaking hot so freaking gorgeous and how she and he are the hottest people there and that they're the people that others would normally flock to. First of all, you're delusional, Bartiz, okay? You know, let, let me just put that out there. I'm not going to say anything further that other than you're delusional. I, if I saw Bartiz in a club, I would, I would not be walking towards him. So let's stop it. And I know my girls, he's not their type either. I've talked to them. So it's just, I don't like that attitude. And the fact that you're talking to your fiance as if she's some ugly woman who can't com compete with you guys. You guys are up here and she's down there. Like, really, dude, what kind of conversation is that to have? And like, his eyes are just so like starry and stuff thinking about this other woman who is not 
the woman that he chose to propose to. So in episode five, Bartiz really gets like bold. He swims up to Raven in the pool and he starts flirting with her and talking again about how they are these hotties that like nobody else is on their level. Everybody would flock to get together with them. And, you know, he describes her as like the most, like he doesn't say she's the most beautiful thing ever, but when he's describing her to us in his confessional, it seems like he basically wants to say she's like the most beautiful thing ever. And um, it just made me so sad for Nancy that he never once described her that way. And I felt like it was such trash. And like for him as an engaged man to constantly be hitting on Raven at the pool, horrible. Like it's just so hurtful, you know, for Nancy to go ahead and watch that on the show, not knowing what is happening behind her back. Like one thing I will say though, and I did say this in my video about how we were wrong about Raven. I was really proud of her for calling out his shallowness and not being flattered by his skin deep compliments to her. She's like, you only like me because you like the way I look. You don't like nothing else. So you need to GTFO. I'm happy with my connection. It's a serious connection. It's an emotional connection. And it's a mental connection. And this, whatever you think you've got with me, it's nothing to me. And I felt like she was so smart and, you know, to go ahead and continue with SK and honor her engagement there instead of trying to emotionally cheat the way that Bartise was trying to do with her. So again, what does Bartise do? I feel like people like Bartise and Cole are on this show specifically to break women down and to lower their self-esteem. I've got a video about how Cole literally engage, um, enjoys, he finds glee, pleasure in gaslighting his fiance, not gaslighting, I'm sorry, you guys, in negging his fiance Zeneb. But now we're going to talk about how uh, Bart is just so toxic. He keeps bragging about how he's too hot for his fiance and everybody and how Raven is also like the hottest girl there. Like, how do you think that makes his fiance feel? You know what I mean? He's like, oh, she's so gorgeous and she's so fit. And like, she's like the type of girl that everybody goes for. And you're saying that to your fiance, like that is just, in my opinion, a deliberate attempt to uh, hurt her self-esteem. And I don't like that. And he talked about her being really into fitness. Natalie is a healthy sized woman but she's not a fitness freak the way that Raven is. So to me, I felt like that was a form of negging to make her feel like her body is not good enough. It's not fit enough or anything like that. And mind you, he never once, like you could see in Nancy's eyes that she's hurt by his comments and he never once reassured her that she's beautiful, she's gorgeous. And she's the type of girl that everybody flocks to as well. I just don't understand it. Whenever like Cole talks about Colleen, uh, Colleen versus Zenab, and uh, whenever Bartiz talks about Nancy versus Raven. I'm like, do you guys not know what you have? Like Zeneb. And to me, the most gorgeous girls out there on this season are Zeneb and Nancy. I, I like, I think they're so freaking beautiful. Nancy's eyes are just so warm and inviting and happy and loving. And just, you know, like they just feel like a hug when you see her eyes. And I think she's the most adorable lips ever. Like her top lip is big and curved. And then her bottom lip is a little smaller. It's like that. And I think it's the cutest thing. Like she has the cutest lips ever, you know, and like the fact that he can look at this woman and not like be like, wow, I am so lucky. She's so gorgeous. She's so smart. She's so successful. She, is, she owns all these homes. It's like, and she's not in debt at all for them. You know what I mean? Like, and he cannot look at all that and be proud and like even humble that she chose to be with him of all people. What does Bartiz have to offer besides muscles? And like, I don't know, a little Afro puff up there. I don't know. What else does he have to offer? Height? He can reach the top shelf. He can open a jar of pickles. But that's about it. You know, I, I, I just can't. I can't. Like the, the delusion of these men. And same thing with Zenab versus Cole. What does Cole have to offer versus Zenab? You know, like these women are so far out of these men's league. And I think these men know it. And that's why they constantly try to bring them down, neg them, and make them feel like they're not good enough for the men. And unfortunately, it's working. You see these women like in positions where... Their self-esteem is literally being chipped away before our eyes. And they're like begging these men who literally are, you know what I mean? Like to love them. And it sucks. It really sucks to see. So um, Nancy takes Bartise to see one of her properties. And you can see his li eyes light up at the possibility of being her sugar baby. Um, and he's like, oh, it'll be so nice to grow our financial future together. Ugh, GTFO, you don't even like that girl. You're just trying to get in on the legacy that she had before you. And I didn't like how Nancy was very open with the whole what's mine is yours, you know, 50-50. It's like, no, he didn't work for all that stuff. You know what I think, you guys? This is my um, philosophy as a woman who also owns real estate. I don't believe what's mine is yours. You know what I think it is? What I had before I, you is mine. 
what you had before me is yours. And then what we've built together is ours. So you're not going to touch my properties. You're not going to touch the rent I get for my properties. You're not going to touch my bank account from before, you know, like then we'll start a new page together. You know, I think that Nancy is way too willing to share her financial success with a man who has done nothing to contribute to it. And unfortunately she advertised that on television. So when this situation with Bartiz inevitably does not work out, she's going to be targeted by another F boy, another bum looking to get in on her money because she basically said, listen, I don't care. I will give up, you know, half of what I work for. And I didn't really like that. I, I got to say, I hope she doesn't believe that anymore because it's not smart. So Bartiz goes over to her home to meet her brothers and he describes his reasons for loving Nancy. This is episode six, by the way. And I love how her brother, I think it was Jesus or something. I don't remember. He called him out. He's like, mm, these reasons are a little too bland. I'm not really impressed. I'm not moved by them. And then um, Bartiz, he did kind of like stress Bartiz out so much that Bartiz like against himself admitted that he's an emotionally unavailable man toxic trait number one million if you're counting okay um one thing i will say though in support of bartice was that i did not like the brother asking the 400 pound question it's like oh if she was 400 pounds would you still love her would you still be with her it's not fair to put people in that position if you meet someone and they're in fitness and health and stuff and these are your values if they're suddenly 400 pounds they fall out of alignment with your values and yeah you are i think you are justified to lose um attraction for them in that respect and I think that he was right to say listen we can work it's something that we would have to work on together because I'm going to straight up tell you I'm not going to be attracted to her to anybody at 400 pounds and I think he has a right I think we all have the right to our standards of what we will and will not accept in a relationship you know just because you committed doesn't mean you have to accept everything you know what I mean it's kind of like how sometimes people um you know they're getting married and they're having a certain amount of like sex in their relationship and then all of a sudden they get too comfortable and they stop and they expect you to still be like no sorry um we had a certain understanding and we had a certain rhythm and stuff like that yeah dry spells happen and this and that but if we're not banging anymore what do you want me to do you know what i mean like we're gonna have to keep it moving at this point so I am totally with him on that. So let's get into the abortion topic, shall we? This is a very hot topic. I felt it was very stupid to bring up on the show because you will never be right. So if you're pro-choice, the pro-lifers will hate you. If you're pro-life, the pro-choicers will hate you. There's no way, you know? And then if you're neutral, both sides will hate you for um, being neutral on something that is so divisive, you know? So there really is no um, being right. So I felt like it was quite uh, foolish of uh, Nancy to bring it up on the show, but I digress. So Nancy says, um, tell ask Bart how he feels about the idea of aborting a child with a birth defect. And he said, hell no, he'd still love the kid. This is where I kind of laughed. I'm sorry, you guys, because I was like, what is he talking about? Because she's like, like, how would you feel about aborting a child with a birth defect? He's like, no, F no. I would still love my child, even if my child was trans or had three legs. I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> this trans was a birth defect. What? It was so weird. Um, so listen, Nancy, she works in healthcare, so she understands the impact of, you know, severe disabilities on families and whatnot. So her, her having witnessed these things firsthand, she feels like that is something she would do. She would get an abortion because she would not be able to give the child a hundred percent. Um, and she would not want her life to suffer as a result of, um, you know, caring for someone who suffers from so many, um, disabilities. Uh, listen, I kind of felt like I support Nancy, of course, and I support her choice, but it kind of, I think it's a subject that was probably a little bit hurtful to people who suffer from disabilities or birth defects who watch the show, you know, kind of feeling like they were invalid or anything like that. And so, um, I definitely would not, um, tread too deep into that topic personally if I were on um, television. One thing I will say though is that Bartise's reaction was very immature, the whole F no, like before even really hearing out her perspective, you know, as someone who works in the medical field, you know, it's very easy when you're 25 with not much life experience to say things like that. And it's, I'm sorry, men, but as a man as well, men very rarely put, uh, put in even 50% of parenting, you know, it's usually less than 50%. Um, unfortunately, women take on the vast majority. So it would mainly fall on if they had a child together, it would mainly fall on Nancy, I can pretty much guarantee that. Um, so it's very easy when you're not typically the primary caregiver um, uh, 
to, to say that, you know, so, so definitively. So um, one thing that I thought was kind of funny was like, he's like, women get one abortion pass and it's only if they're not financially ready or if they're too young. So it's like, all right. Um, if you're, if you're pregnant with a potentially happy, um, healthy child, fine, uh, you abort it because you're too young um, or don't have enough money. But if you're pregnant with a child that can have a low quality of life and truly suffer throughout life, don't. It didn't make any sense. And then he talks about all the plan Bs. He's been out here buying women. It's like, so I'm a little confused here. I'm getting dizzy. So uh, on that, let's on that note, let's talk about episode seven when Nancy meets his family. So Nancy um, and him are sitting with his family at the kitchen. And then he brings up the abortion thing. And then her sister starts crying about families choosing abortion. And I didn't understand that that's why she was crying at first. I was like, okay, let me go back. Because maybe like she's talking about like, she suffered a miscarriage or something like that. And she was just triggered at all of this. I don't know, but she was just sad because some people, some women choose to have abortions. Some families choose to have abortions. And I was like, I would take this as a red flag. I'm sorry. Like I am not pff, the idea of marrying into a family this like, you know, extreme uh, kind of stresses me out. I'm not even gonna lie. It just feels very, very judgmental. And so I didn't like it at all. And I felt like Bartiz purposely set her up by asking that question or bringing up that topic in front of his family, knowing their stance on it. We all know our family stances on these sort of hot button issues. And he did that uh, specifically to kind of humiliate his fiance. And I really did not like that. So this is where he continues to get extra toxic, by the way. Okay, you guys. So this is 1 million and 10, if you're still counting. So um, at a certain point, midway through episode seven, Barty says that something feels off in his relationship with Nancy. So they've kind of started icing each other out. So you see him on his computer typing away, doing his little accounting. Nancy's getting ready to go to work. And um, he says that his sister no longer believes in the relationship, which I felt was an odd adage because like, I don't know, like, okay, like, okay, like, what am I supposed to say about that? I don't know. So um, then all the couples meet up with all the other random couples, but not only them, but people who were not cast, um, not engaged or anything like that. And so Andrew, who proposed to Natalie before Bartiz did and who Natalie rejected for Bartiz, um, is there. And Bartiz decides to try to humiliate Andrew in front of everybody by asking him how he proposed to Nancy and what she said. I, I felt like, listen, how Andrew proposed to Nancy is his own business. It's personal, it's intimate, it's private, only to be shared on Netflix, okay? Uh, and number two, Bartiz, you knew that Nancy said no because Nancy's engaged to you. So the only goal for you in this conversation is to humiliate and bully Andrew and to make him feel like a loser next to you because you got the girl, you know, like Bartiz, that was very toxic. I did not like it. I did not appreciate it. So, you know, what's really kind of gross about this is that um, Andrew gets to talk to Nancy a little bit about her relationship with Bartiz since the engagement. And Nancy lets him know that Bartiz told her that he wants to be with a tall, blonde fitness model. What? To say that to your fiance, who is not tall, who is, she's the opposite of tall, okay? She's short. She's the opposite of blonde. She's brunette, you know, and she's not, a, she's not like the opposite of fitness model. Because to me, the opposite of a fitness model would be someone who's like, you know, obese or something or way overweight, but she's like in shape, but she's definitely not a fitness model. So for you to say all of that to your fiance, again, in my opinion, is an example of emotional abuse. But the fact that Nancy, when Andrew asked, do you regret getting engaged to him? She says, no. I'm like, girl, please pick your self-esteem up out of the gutter. This is embarrassing. Are you kidding me? All the stuff this guy does to you, the way he keeps on bragging about another woman and how she's so gorgeous and you're not, and you don't regret getting engaged to him at your big old age. Really? Are you kidding me? And then when he's describing the tall blonde fitness model, it did not strike. It did not cross your mind that again, he's talking about Raven. It's crazy to me. It's crazy. So um, Nancy starts crying about how she loves this guy, but he doesn't love her. And you still don't regret getting engaged to him? All right. So here comes toxic ass Bartiz. As Nancy's crying about being emotionally abused by him, he walks up, trying to puff his chest, puff his little Afro puff, like, oh man, that's my woman. Let me go get her. So he pops up and he leans in extra close to Andrew to intimidate him. Bartiz really feels like he, you know, I don't know if it's because Andrew's Asian or something. And there's some stereotypes about Asian men not being like 
as macho or masculine as other men, especially black men. But I noticed that there's a little bit of thinly veiled something, something in Bartice's interactions with Andrew that go beyond just the rivalry of them both proposing to the same girl. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section. So he gets in extra close to Andrew to ask, so what are you guys talking about? Huh? Huh? And then he just seems so gross and toxic. And I really don't like it. And it's like, I'm so disturbed by the way he could treat this woman like crap, beat her self-esteem down into the ground, tell her every day that there's another woman that he he's so attracted to who's a million times more beautiful than her. And then he has the audacity to play jealous when another man is over there talking to her, listening to her and telling her that she is valuable, she is beautiful and she is all of these great things. Like, F you, you toxic little bitch. I'm, oh my God, I just slipped out of my mouth. I'm sorry y'all for swearing. I never swear on this channel, but I'm sorry. Like it's so toxic and gross and I hate it. Sometimes I feel like these shows are meant to give men free reign to just emotionally abuse the hell out of women, destroy their self-esteem and it's disgusting and it's sad. So, you know, mind you, earlier in the episode, they both talked about how they haven't been hugging or kissing that much at home. Nancy has been begging this man to hug her or kiss her and he's been calling her needy for it so he's been withholding all this from her but all of a sudden now that she's talking to another man he's like he kisses her on the mouth in front of that man for no reason other than to kind of like let andrew know that he got the girl right and i i just hated that it's so gross oh i can't stand that man so now they get back home and they talk again about their kind of crumbling relationship and this is where he really oh, ah, Ah, like digs the freaking sword into her heart and my heart too, um, as a witness. I really, I am sorry. Again, like I said earlier, Nancy is so beautiful. She truly is so beautiful. When I look at her, I see just gorgeousness. Okay. So for this man to tell her, Nancy, I'm having a hard time with this experience, like getting through her day-to-day -day issues because you're not my type. You're not my ideal type physically. I'm not that attracted to you. You know, like he basically says that if she were, remember his type, which is tall, blonde, fitness model, it would be easy for him to overlook the issues like her still owning some real estate with her ex and whatnot. But because she's not, it's hard for him to want to stay in this relationship. Do you know how mean that is? Do you know how degrading that is? Do you know how abusive that is emotionally? That's a horrible thing to say. Like, <sighs> You know, like I could put up with a lot of shit from a hottie, but your ugly ass, I don't know. I'm having a hard time with it. That's basically what he told his freaking fiance. And thankfully for my darling, um, Nancy, <sighs> Matt calls, abusive Matt calls on the phone. And he's upset because Colleen went to the club. Oh, I forgot to mention this in my Matt recap, but he's upset because Colleen went to the club and um, he wanted her to come home with him. And he doesn't want to marry the type of woman who goes to the club drops it like it's hot a little bit you know he wants a woman at home doing what he wants when he wants you know as he wants it and so Bartiz goes over there to help his fellow toxic ass abusive ass man and you know what he says about his fiance a real life human being on tv he's like oh stop it like you are just looking for all kinds of like problems in your relationship ever since the beginning do you know how lucky you are like you have been attracted to your fiance ever since the beginning. Like I would pay money to be in your position. Attracted to my fiance. Imagine, like you are, I really hope Nancy did not marry this man because she really seemed like, despite all the toxicity, she wanted to marry him. Like imagine you're sitting there, you're watching the show with your family and a man says that about you, that he would pay money to be attracted to you. Like, wow. Wow. As if the whole I'm only into like tall, blonde fitness model thing was not bad enough. This man is out here talking about I would pay usher bucks or real money. I'm not sure to be attracted to you. And this is the same guy who's constantly begging you to kiss him. This is the same guy who's banging you multiple times in the night saying he's not attracted to you. I would feel so gross. I would feel so hurt. I would feel so humiliated. Like Nancy does not deserve that. Nobody deserves that. That is so freaking toxic burp tease like what the hell why would you even say that like you're such trash to say that on tv like i hate that nancy had to go through this i really do it's not fair it's horrible what they put her through on this show it really is he's this is a good reminder of why a 25 year old 
should not be on the show. You know, 25 year old Barty's, uh, 26 year old Cole. How old is uh, Matt, by the way? I don't know how old he is, but he's probably too young to be on the show too. I'm not saying that people like 30 plus are not toxic. They certainly are. Um, but it's just too young. It's too, uh, no, he shouldn't have been on the show in the first place. These guys should not have been on the show in the first place. I've got nothing left to say, you guys. I really hope that this has not damaged Nancy too much because she seems like a wonderful person. And like I said, she's a physically gorgeous person. Every time I see her on screen, I the first thing that comes to mind is how beautiful she is, how beautiful her eyes are, how beautiful her lips are, how beautiful her hair is, how beautiful everything about her is, you know? Um, and same thing with uh, the other one who's being emotionally abused, Zeneb. Same thing, beautiful in every sense of the word, you know? And this is what they've got. These abusive ass, toxic ass men, draining them, beating down their self-esteem, comparing them against other women. It's horrible. And these are men who are not even in the same level as them, in the same league as them. I just don't understand it. Anyway, you guys, this video has gotten too long. I'm sorry. I didn't know I'd be rambling this long, y'all. But let me know what you think about toxic ass Bart Tease in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat, okay? That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.